Ironically, he was still drowsy when he awoke from sleep and appears to have slept insufficiently. He appeared to have had a quick five-minute nap. As the slumber seemed sweeter now, he was inclined to fall asleep once again. But as he looked at the clock, he realized it was time for him to leave. The Ethiopian servant of the prophet Jeremiah, Abimelech, was tasked with gathering figs at Agrippa's property outside of Jerusalem. But it seems as though something occurred to him inside the five minutes of his nap, he has traveled not in terms of distance or speed but rather in terms of hours, days, and years. In this video, I'll share with you the story of the first person to travel across time, or simply the first person to ever travel anywhere in the world, who was a prophet named Jeremiah. The story was taken from Baruch's book. You see, you will comprehend that time travel is the idea of traveling from one place to another inside space at a different time or period if you have watched some time travel films, such as the Terminator series. Simply put, it means that someone or something can move from one time in the present, past, or future at one location to another time in the present, past, or even future at the same site or another location. Simply explained, time travel is the method by which someone can vanish from New York in 1926 and reappear in London in 2023, typically with the help of a tool known as a time machine. Despite how common the idea is in fiction, there is no proof that anyone has ever traveled for a lifetime. We have philosophical and science fiction studies of its potential application in books and movies. I'll give you the background so you can comprehend what truly occurred to Abimelech when I return to the story. As a result, when Jeremiah was the prophet at that time, the Israelites were in Jerusalem. Baruch, the reader at the temple in Jerusalem, gave him assistance. He intercedes on behalf of the Israelites, his people, so that they may live their lives in accordance with God's will. Now, it so happened that on one of the nights that Jeremiah traveled back from Jerusalem after leaving the city, the moon shone on a muddy spot along his path, giving it the appearance of being dry ground. He steps onto the ostensibly dry ground and immediately sinks into the mud. He tried to get himself out of the mud but was unable. He immediately started to sink and might perish in the mud in a matter of minutes. Suddenly, he was hauled out of the dirt by someone who grasped his hand. The prophet prayed for the man and sought to learn his name as the stranger was being laid on the hard ground. The man responded, I'm from Ethiopia, and my name is Abimelech. He is seeking the God of Israel, who he has heard does amazing things, after making the long journey from a distant place. Jeremiah informed him that since he was the prophet of the God he was seeking, God had brought him to him. The prophet then appointed him his attendant and led him to the Jerusalem temple. Now, it so happened that the Lord showed up to Jeremiah one night and commanded him to organize his home since God was about to destroy Jerusalem because of their crimes. He was going to let the Chaldeans to invade Jerusalem and abduct everyone as a prisoner to Babylon because the people of Israel had the chance to repent and become decent people, but they chose not to. They are being punished for rejecting his rules and morals by doing this. The prophet begged God to restrain his mercy as he preached repentance to the populace. However, God says they had all the time in the world to change, but because they refused, their chance has passed, and he has decided to punish them as a result. Jeremiah begged God to punish the nations directly rather than allowing them to invade and pillage Jerusalem. The other countries won't at least take pride in being able to enter and conquer the city of God without encountering any resistance. God informed him that he would be the one to attack the city first, using angels to throw open the city's gates and let the attackers pass through. They will have access to the city as well as a sign proving that it is under his control, preventing them from seizing the spotlight for themselves. He is the one who punishes the Israelites by employing the Chaldeans. God now gave Jeremiah the command to find Baruch, tell him what he has told him, and by the middle of the night, they are to leave the city for God's angels are on their way to conquer it. 
they decided to enter the temple and continue their prayers and supplications, pleading with God to save the people from his anger after Jeremiah had told Baruch the entire account. The city was surrounded by God's angels, who were standing guard with torches at approximately twilight. The prophet asked God about the temple's vessels as he implored the angels to postpone their execution. God instructed him to speak to the earth and it would split open, allowing him to bury the tools and prevent the land from being looted by the invaders. Jeremiah and Baruch assembled all of the temple's offerings before speaking to the world. The vessels were sucked up by the expanding earth. The Lord responded to Jeremiah's request by telling him that he had made plans to shield Abimelech from the disaster that was about to strike the city. The prophet then summoned Abimelech, telling him to go outside the city and harvest figs for him. When the Chaldeans arrived and entered the city, including the prophet Jeremiah, the Lord commanded the angels to open the gate for them. Baruch, who was still in the city, went to a cave where God sent an angel to announce the date of Jerusalem's rebuilding. As a result, the king of the Chaldeans carried Jeremiah and the people of Israel to Babylon. Abimelech, his Ethiopian servant, was unaware that Jeremiah and the Israelites were being exiled from Jerusalem the entire time. For his master, he had gone beyond the city to gather figs. He began to feel sleepy as he put the figs in his basket. He took a nap there under one of the trees before returning to the city to give his master the grape. He believed he had only slept for five minutes when he finally woke up. Alas! He'd been dozing off for 66 years. Wow, what a restless night that was. You see, his master telling him to fetch a basket and collect figs that early morning was the last thing he remembered. He was also aware that his master utilizes figs as a form of medicine. He hastily left the city as a result, not knowing what would happen to it after his departure. The figs he had just gathered still looked fresh and were streaming with juice when he first awoke under the tree, and everything appeared to be normal. Following the route he traveled to the farms outside the city, he quickly grabbed his basket and ran into the town to find his master. But to his surprise, the course appeared to be different. As he got closer to the city, he saw how different it appeared as well as how all of the houses there were distinct from the ones he was used with. He wondered if he was heading in the right direction. Is my direction correct or am I still dreaming? He questioned. He would occasionally pinch himself to determine whether he was dreaming or whether what he was witnessing was indeed happening. He experienced the pinch's anguish. It is not a dream, it is actuality. In his head, he said. When he arrived in the city, he failed to recognize a single individual. He walked to where his dwellings were, and there was another structure there. The residents were not members of his family, nor were they his neighbors. No one there seems to know him, and neither does he know anyone there. In order to make sure he was following the proper path, he left the city and went back to the spot where he had first been awake. He was still taken to the same, unrecognizably familiar city. He doesn't realize that after just a brief slumber of five minutes, the city has completely altered for him. He exited the city once more and stood there, unsure of what to do. He was still pondering his next move when an elderly guy walked past the path. When he asked the elderly guy which city it was, he replied, This is Jerusalem. Jerusalem? Old man, please don't make fun of me, I am quite familiar with Jerusalem. Not in Jerusalem, here. My son, this is Jerusalem, are you a stranger here? The elderly man asked in confusion. Okay, if this is Jerusalem, where are the temple readers Baruch and Jeremiah? Abimelech questioned. You are obviously a stranger in this city, the old guy muttered as he cast a bewildered glance at him. Do you not recall that 66 years ago, the Chaldeans raided this city and carried off Jeremiah and the inhabitants, leaving only his reader Baruch? What? You're saying that I've been asleep for 66 years, then? Yes. 
I consider you to be a just man. God shielded you from witnessing such a catastrophe for this reason. Let me tell you this, 66 years ago today, our city was conquered, and Jeremiah and the entire populace were taken prisoner to Babylon. The only one left was Baruch the reader, who has been pleading in the cave ever since. When Abimelech heard this, he bowed his head and prayed to God. He was abruptly taken by an angel to Baruch's subterranean meeting place. And seeing Abimelech still looking as young as he did 66 years earlier, Baruch broke down in tears. He was informed of all that transpired while he was asleep by Baruch, who also invited him to participate in prayers for the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And the angel instructed Baruch to have a message ready for Jeremiah because God would be sending a bird to him to act as the messenger for Jeremiah. Baruch discovered the bird that spoke to him as a man and prepared the message. He gave the bird instructions to deliver the message to Jeremiah in Babylon. As a sign to Jeremiah, he also offered the bird some figs that Abimelech had brought. The bird flew to Babylon and settled down beside a tree to wait for Jeremiah. Jeremiah, meanwhile, left the city with a group of people to bury a deceased guy. The deceased man is subsequently resurrected as a result of the bird's landing, surprising everyone and serving as a testament to the bird's divine origin. After the bird finished telling them everything, Baruch informed Jeremiah and the rest of the group of people of the message. In the end, God enabled the Israelites to return to Jerusalem, but, those who had intermarried with the Babylonians were not permitted to do so, and when they went back to Babylon, the Babylonians likewise forbade them from settling there. So they moved to an empty area adjacent to Jerusalem and established Samaria as a city. They celebrated for ten days after the Israelites made it back to Jerusalem. The people will later accuse Jeremiah of blasphemy after his three days dead and his message about the coming of the Son of God. However, Jeremiah will later return with a message concerning the coming of Jesus Christ. When the populace attempted to stone Jesus during his message delivery, God caused the ages to turn the stones to resemble him. Before their eyes were opened to see the real Jeremiah and they stoned him to death, he conveyed the entirety of God's message to Baruch and Abimelech as they were stoning him with stones. Do you think Abimelech traveled across time as he slept? Thank you for watching.